Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse um, 13 after I sneeze. <coughs> Shoot, forget it. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touch one another, and the noise of the wheels over against them, and the noise of a great rushing. And we're about those wheels again. And it's interesting that those wheels are connected with God. And when we go over to Daniel, look at Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. In Daniel, Ezekiel, Revelation. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days God did sit, whose garment was white as snow, his hair is the head of like pure wool. That's Jesus, Revelation 1. God's a spirit. You can't see God, but Daniel seen Jesus Christ. His throne was like the fiery flame. Have we not seen that in Ezekiel? And his wheels as a burning fire. Uh oh, Daniel says he's got wheels too. And they describe these UFOs. But we won't get into that. So, verse 14. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away. I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. And the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. And then I came to them to captivity of Tel Aviv. What Tel Aviv? You hear that word Tel Aviv? You think it's so long? Tel Aviv that dwelt by the river Chebar. I sat there. I sat where they sat. I remained there astonished amongst them seven days. We talked about that last time. And it came to pass at the end of seven days. That the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Now he's in bitterness, he, he's, he's heated. And then God's going to reveal to him, I set you as a watchman. I don't know if that has anything to do with Ezekiel's attitude. But here's a continuation of the commission. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman, a sentry, a guard. Unto the house of Israel, we just told him, said, listen, you're not going to be with people of strange language, strange speech, but Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth, you already said, hear the word at my heart, your heart, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, when God says something unto the wicked, he says it through a, a man. Through the scriptures, through evangelists, through a preacher, through a teacher, a missionary, thou shalt surely die. Every man knows death is coming. God, as God's put into the heart of man, you cannot drive by a cemetery, a funeral home, a hospital. Really, you know what? One of these days. Somebody's going to try to sell you life insurance. And that's not a preacher. That's not the Bible. Death is just, hey, common. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. All have sinned and come short of glory to God. And thou givest him not warning. So, where man knows he's going to die. And any child of God, Ezekiel or the Christian, does not give them a warning because we are watchmen, we are guards, we are Christian soldiers. God is telling Ezekiel, you go and tell them what I tell you. God tells us that go into all the world and preach the gospel. 
speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. So when a Christian does not witness and preach the gospel, I ain't talking about come to church, come to our bowling league, I let my light shine. When you don't receive the word of God and give them the warning of God that there's a hell, that there is judgment, that person dies. Family, friend, neighbor, work, co-worker. And you fail to give them a warning. There's a requirement. And yet if you can speak many other words, I'm afraid to speak about Jesus. I can't speak. But you can speak other words, Jesus said, every idle word. Of the foolishness you can talk about, but not Jesus. And listen, there are people I failed to witness to. There are people I did not witness to. And at the great white throne judgment, my hands are going to be full of blood. But not as much blood as many Christians today who don't say nothing. Inviting them to your church is not the word of God. A gospel track is the word of God. That's acceptable of God. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, he won't repent, he won't get right with God, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So you go out there and tell them, and they don't do nothing. You've done what God told you to do. Paul says, I planted Apollo's waters, but God gave the increase. The sower went out and sowed the seed. He put the word of God everywhere. Long came the birds, devoured it. The birds are the devil. Some among the thorns, some among the wayside. It's not your responsibility, but it's what? You told them. And their response doesn't matter to you. It's what you've done. If you preach the God, now don't go out there. I've got a wonderful church. I've got a wonderful preacher. That don't count. Well, you know, I invited them to the chicken meal. I, I bought them groceries. We had a church bowling league. We had a church movie night. That's not what it says. He told Ezekiel already, we read last night and, and today, you put the word in your heart, you hear what I tell you out of, your, out of my mouth, and then you go and tell them my word. Because you may invite them to church and they may mark it up. I went to church and your pastor say nothing about the gospel. He went ranting and raving on other stupid things. You are accountable for the people that God has put in your life for the gospel. And if it's not the gospel, you have not done your duty. You have not done your guard. What would be where I come from, New London County, Connecticut, we had nuclear sirens. What would be the guy who's sitting at that, that council and he gets a phone call where well, the nuclear power plant has blown up? And he runs to the bunker. And he doesn't hit the buttons. And the people die. And the people suffer too, they die. He's going to be held accountable. Now, if he pressed that button and, uh, 
and they don't do nothing. All right, you press the button. When the weather forecasters say hurricanes come into your area and you move, all right, they did their job, they warned you. And if they warned there's a hurricane coming, people stay, they warned you. And if you die or get stuck or get abandoned, that's your fault. I don't think the paramedics and the, and the emergency response are going to save you. You were warned. If a Christian warns you and you die and go to hell, you ain't going to get saved when you get in hell. You were warned. Now, if you weren't warned, You find that in the Old Testament. You find it with Jesus to his disciples going all the world and preach the gospel. And how do you know that's Christian? Because that's throughout the book of Acts. That's Paul's three missionary journeys. There's a people over here that got this unknown God. And Paul's like, eh, excuse me, cut. Interrupt your services for a moment. And let me show you the true living God. Oh, you know, Paul, they might be offended. Paul didn't care. Paul's in, in synagogue. And they and they read the Moses, they read the law and everything. And, and, and the, the rabbi says, anybody got anything to say before we close the service? Paul raises his hand, stand up, well, let me show you the way of Jesus more clearly. Well, you know, that's not the place. Yes, it was. If God gives us the opportunity and the ability at that moment to preach Jesus, you better get a hold of it. And I failed. People at the farmer's market, they, they don't want to hear it. I don't care you don't want to hear it. I see new faces and you're going to hear it again. Maybe the next time it'll stick in your heart. But rest assured, people of the farmer's market, as far as my life, if you die and then end up at the great white throne judgment, you and I tell them all the time, you can't tell them, I never knew. All right, bring the Hayward family up here. Oh, no, it's not them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what are you afraid of? So, I mean, that's a commission by God. And the hand of the Lord was there was upon me. And people will say, well, I don't know why God doesn't use me. How many people does has God put in your path that you don't do what you're supposed to? What's the will of God? All right, let's go over to, to Mark. I don't go to Matthew because Matthew comes up short. Actually, go to Matthew. Last chapter of Matthew. We'll compare it to two. Matthew 28. Matthew 28, 19. Now, this is what the churches say. Matthew is not a church book. It's Jewish. But, it? go ye therefore, okay, there's a go, teach all nations and baptize in them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now let me give you Mark. What I run to Mark 16, 15. He said, Jesus said, because it's going to be red letters, unto them, go ye into the world, not just the nations, the world, that includes Jews, and preach the gospel to every creature. That's a lot more severe than, than Matthew, the Great Commission. 
And you'll say, well, women are not supposed to preach. Well, listen, you go out there and start telling them about Jesus. Start telling them about heaven and hell. Start telling them about the gospel. Somebody in, in your lifetime will say, don't preach to me. That's our commission. We are to go into the world. That's a missionary job. It doesn't say missionaries go into the world. Preach the gospel. Not preach, go to church. You can't find anywhere where nobody invited anybody to church, including Paul. Nowhere that say, well, you come to church Sunday morning, invite them to the church. Nowhere says, bring them in, bring them in from the field of sin. That's your job. Sower went out and sowed seed. Sower didn't go out and, and sowed invitations to church. Paul said, I planted and Paul's water. Didn't say anything about we invited to church and we had, you know, the, the, the chicken festival and we had the baked beans and we had, you know, whatever churches do. And don't give me your VBS is your VBS is five minutes Bible, ten minutes arts and craft, twenty minutes, you know, both before and after, you know, make sure everybody's there, attendance, and then you know, five minutes story reading, fifteen minutes snacks, and then you know, two weeks of decorations and clearing all the decorations. I've been in two VBSs. And there have been very little gospel. And at the end of one of the BBSs, we handed out NIVs and RSVs, which are not the Word of God. By a King James proclaiming church, that really wasn't King James. But we we're going somewhere else. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel 33. That was actually didn't cost you nothing. Verse 2. Verse 1, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Verse 2, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people. All right, you want to bring that up today? Speak unto the children of thy people, Gentiles, your co workers, your family, your neighbors, the people in your community. Say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, you know, if the rapture would happen right now, there will be a period of seven years coming, the tribulation period. People you know and love right now may go through the tribulation period, both the tribulation and the great fight. I mean, the, the great tribulation period. They may make it to seven years. They may survive to seven years. And there will be a sword coming upon the land out of the mouth of Jesus Christ. You know, the Christians, oh, the rapture's going to happen imminently. Christ is coming imminently. And then you act like, as far as the lost people, so, oh, I ain't going to come. The chicken meals are, are more important than telling them about Jesus. And what if that chicken meal at the church, oh, we're enjoying chicken, and boom, the, the trumpets blow. Your chicken stops on the ground, and your visitors are still there eating their chicken. I guess more chicken for me. And at the end of seven years, here comes the sword of Jesus Christ out of his mouth. If they survive the seven years. Aren't you thinking about it like that? What if the, what if your family and friends, what if, well, uh, oh, let, me, let me think of something wild and weird. Let me think of something. What if a virus came around the worldwide and it put people in hospitals and they were put on breathing machine, and they died in the hospitals by the rapid thousands and millions as a judgment of God, and not global warming. Then, what if something like that happen? If that were to happen, well, I'll wait to my my coworker. I'll wait to that moment he gets sick and he's in the hospital. You can't see him in the hospital. I know a husband and wives. Where the spouse died, they could not go to the funeral because they are in the hospital with COVID. 
I know people have been in the hospital with COVID. Their family can't go see them because they got COVID and they die. And you don't know how, were anybody there? There was just, just recently, last couple of days, there's an island over in the Atlantic Ocean, a, a, a volcano just erupted. We are up to Peter and name hurricane storms. Hurricane Ira, though she wasn't a hurricane, as she went through New went through the United States up to New York and, and New England and all that, people died of Ira. The sword go through the land. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll invite them to church. Mama, children, boss, co-worker, neighbor. Will you come with me to church Sunday morning? We're having something special. We're not. Will you come to church with me? You will? Oh, thank you very much. It, it's at 9.30. It's at 2 o'clock. It's at 10 o'clock. It's at 10.30. You'll be there? All right. Honey, what's all those flashing lights? I don't know. It's like the fire department's come. Oh, here comes the ambulance. Oh, they're next door. Oh, our neighbor just died Saturday night. Oh, he was going to go to church with us Sunday morning. You didn't tell him the way of salvation. What if they died before church Sunday morning? Well, I invited them. They said they would come. You know how many people have told me they'd be in church and did not show up? And if they died before they went to church, they died without Jesus Christ. They died without you telling them the gospel. You will have blood on your fingers. If the people of the land take a man of their coast and set them as their watchman. Now this is the people putting a watchman up. This is not God setting Ezekiel. But this matches Ezekiel chapter 3. If when he seeth the sword come upon the land and blow the trumpet and warn the people, whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet taketh not warning, if the sword come and take away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. You know, that's not a child of God. There are people today, whatever reason, occupation, or the thing that God has put them in, saved or lost, that God has put them to be, you are to warn the people of a danger. If you don't do it, if the weathermen don't warn you, if the military don't warn you, if the President of the United States don't warn you, if the media does not warn you, but you turn on to the, the news channel and they say, there's a riot in your city and it's growing and growing, it's getting out of hand. You need to get in your car with much personal stuff you can get, and you need to get out. Not, oh, you know, fake news and all that. And if you don't, and they come in, and they rob you, and they kill you and all that, that's your fault. If the President of the United States, here I go, I'm going to make some haters. If he says there's a virus, and you need to be vaccinated for your health, you don't get that vaccine and you get COVID-19 and you died of COVID-19. That's your fault, brother. I don't care if he's Republican. I don't care if he's Democrat. I don't care if he's Socialist. If the President of the United States warned you to get the shot and you didn't do it, 
Now, I don't know if President Biden is going to be at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, but he's going to stand before God either or. Mr. Mr. Biden? Yes, sir. I, I gave during your presidency, I gave you a virus called COVID-19. Yes, sir. I put in your heart to warn them about a virus. Yes, sir. Did you warn them? I tried to make it a law. All right, from that point on, anybody who obeyed the president, and by chance if they got the COVID, by whatever, for, right. Mr. President, Mr. Biden, you're not charged. And anybody who got the virus because they didn't get the shot, Mr. President, Mr. Biden, you're not charged. It's their own foolishness. You see, they rather ravishing, you know, he's a Democrat in order. But we're not done. But if the watchmen see the sword come, and the blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but the blood, the blood will I require at the watchman's hand. But thou, O son of man, I set thee a watchman in the house of Israel. There it goes, chapter 3. All right. So I'll tell you with America, you know, Afghanistan, they're killing all these people. In China, they kill all these people. In Russia, they killed all these people. Out west in, in the history of America, they had done nuclear testing without telling anybody in the area. And those people within time died of nuclear blast, done, died of cancer, and still for many years the government said, oh, nothing happened. We don't know why it's happening. Every one of those people in the government are going to stand before God. Did you tell them about that nuclear? No, we didn't tell them. All right, you're guilty. You know why I would not want the office of a president, a prime minister, a king or queen? Because if you are given the ability to warn the people and you don't, for whatever reason, oh, thou son of man, I set thee to be a watchman over the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth. Sound familiar? And warn them. Do you go to church? Do you hear the Bible? Yeah, I know a lot of Baptist churches today. What you hear out of the pulpits is nonsense. That's the pastor's fault. And that pastor gets up in the pulpit. That Sunday school teacher gets up in the pulpit and doesn't train the Christians to be soldiers. Did you did, did you go to work and tell the people about Jesus? I told him about the flowery lily messages we got and uh, the Resurrection Sunday and all that. That's not what I told you. Who told you that? Well, my pastor. Gabriel, will you check the, the roles of that church and see how many people went out and told people about me? And, the, and None? Pastor, you want to step forward? Why didn't you warn your people to warn the people they know about me? Well, we had to have great numbers. We had to be loved. We had to be popular. Uh, Pastor, yes, Jesus, was I popular? Was I loved? Did I not give them the Father? Did I not instruct the 12 men that were with me? And those 12 men, then they go out and instruct the others, including one of them called Paul. Why didn't you instruct your people? Well, we had chicken fellowship. All right, Pastor. Here's the King James Bible, chapter and verse. A lot of pastors are going to stand accountable because their sheep don't know what to do.
And then you're going to be, oh, we have such a great pastor. We have such a great church. How many people have you actually had received Jesus Christ as their Savior? Not all the people that ended up the great white throne of judgment and ended up in hell. I just said a prayer. How much blood is going to flow through your congregation and your church? Because the ignorance of the staff of your great church, that we're rich, we have need of nothing, and you know where that's coming from, don't you? Now, the people have got to learn from somewhere. Now, God told Ezekiel, you hear my word. You better have the right word. You better not have a modern Bible. When I say unto the wicked, Oh, wicked, this has got to be important. Is it not re repeated? Is it not a verily, verily? That tabernacle, that Moses, is very important because it's mentioned three, four, five times. Where else is that tabernacle mentioned? It's important. John says, hey, I'm in heaven, and there it is. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Well, you know, our church, we're going to have a birthday for Jesus. And how many times is the birthday of Jesus mentioned in Scripture? Well, you know, we have Easter celebration. And how many times is it Easter in the Bible and the resurrection of Jesus and the gospel? Well, you know, they, they, one church, they like Easter. That's what they want. They like the Christmas. That's what they want. Does it, didn't the Bible say preach in season, out of season, rebuke, exhort, rebuke? Isn't that what, the, isn't that? Didn't I hear you quote that a couple of your messages? We are coming to a day as Christians, including myself, at the great white throne judgment, we will have blood on our fingers because we're not 100%. Somebody that God put in our life and we said no. Or another thing, give them a gospel track. Oh, I didn't bring any. I've done that. I got on the car. I'm, I'm, I'm about a mile, two miles away from where I was. And, oh, crap. I didn't leave no gospel track. I had great blood on my fingers. A man that witnesses and tells people about Jesus. I will have blood on my fingers. What about those who don't tell anything? What about the, I let my light shine. How come we, let's not talk, the responsibility of Christians at the great white throne judgment of people we did not tell others about uh, how come that's not preached tears are not wiped away to after the great white throne judgment now i got loved ones in my family i believe honestly i've told everybody in my family about jesus now i'm gonna weep when lost ones of my family are gonna go into great and I don't think I'm going to have the blood of them. But when there have been people dear in my life and there have been people of friendship and I didn't do it or I thought I did it and I didn't do it. And they declare that Jesus is the Lord and they're crying off and they're falling off into hell. You can't go back and redo when I say to the wicked, old wicked man, thou shalt surely die again. Death is You know death is coming. Even little children know death is coming. Somewhere in a little child's life, a grandma and uncle and uncle die. I think the first death I ever had in my family, young, was either my grandpa Hayward or, or my uncle Arthur. And... I, Uncle Arthur, it was like, where's Uncle? He hasn't been around, and he he died of cancer. What? What's, he's not coming back anymore. Or you had a friend whose mother or father died, or it's 
You know death. God speaks to humans. There is a death. You go by in New London and Waterford, main roads, there are main there are cemeteries. You know there's death. If thou if thou does not speak to warn the wicked of his way, again, repeat it. The wicked shall die as iniquity, and his blood will I require at thy hand. Because you didn't tell them about the blood of Jesus. Either you tell them about the blood of Jesus and nothing else. Then the blood gets washed off your hands. And just inviting them to church is not going to work. Now granted, it may not be, it may take a while and opportunity for the witness of somebody. I mean, if you go into the same restaurant, the same restaurant, you got the same cashier, you know, you got the same waitress and all that. I mean, there's times that, you know, you, you, you can pray with them, you give them, you know, the tracks. In the, in the you made the effort. God wants us to make the effort, and churches say, we want the results. We'll go so far and make a result. We'll just have them say a prayer, and we'll make them think they're saved. That's not what God said. The simplest way to tell people about Jesus is a gospel track. And let me ask you something. Go to church next time that your church doors are open. And how well your church is. Find the church gospel track rack. And I will tell you today, modern churches today are afraid of a church rack. I learned how to witness on a gospel church, church track rack, chick tracks. I was collecting. I thought chick tracks were comic books for Christians collectible. They're numbered and everything. Got one right here. This is Cleo. It's number twelve. I was collecting these. Yeah, 11, 12, Oh, I need thirteen. I got fourteen. I'm at the I'm at the gospel chick track and I'm spinning around looking at any I didn't have, and a guy I don't know who it was and I'm going to thank him when I get that. And the long story the story is he told me they're not for you to keep they're for you to give out. And I learned to make the story short they give them out and I've been giving them out since I'm going to say at least 1987 and 88. I don't know how many gospel tracks I got out and left behind in toilets. Best place to leave them in the public? It, well, it used to be phone booths and toilets. If you go into a toilet, there's a newspaper, grab the newspaper, throw it in the garbage can, and leave a gospel track for them to read. And you wonder how many people will thank you when you get to heaven. Now, there have been toilets... That I did not leave a gospel track. I didn't, whatever, I didn't do it. There's going to be blood on my fingers. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, have him say this prayer, have him come before an altar. It's not what it says. He shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. We are given a charge as Christians on this side of Calvary. You don't say you don't see God saying Ezekiel bite him in the temple. And you don't see anywhere on this side of Calvary bite him the church. Matter of fact, the book of Acts, there was no church building. You had to be very careful who you invited because you were living under Nero. Underground church, you don't invite people to the church because you may be inviting the government to the secret underground location. You don't do that. 
You know what you do in the round church? And I've talked to them. You witness, and they get saved, and you help them grow. <coughs> and when you think they're mature enough, and they're trustworthy, you, you believe they are true, honest Christians, then you bite them. You don't bite the lost. Because they're not going to waste their time in an underground church to talk about what you already know about salvation. They're going to talk about things that make you grow. And I'm telling you right now, I'm a street preacher. I'm a witness. I will have people at the great white throne judgment. I will look down at my hands and there will be blood. And that's where the expression comes from. Look at verse 8. But his blood will I require at thy hand. Now, I don't know if it's going to be literal blood. I don't know. How about that lost soul condemning you as they're cast off in the lake of fire? How about that lost soul before Jesus says, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew. Well, what about that Christian over there? Didn't tell me nothing, Lord. And he called me friend. He gave me ballpark tickets. He gave me free meals. But he didn't give me you, Jesus. Now, Jesus, why don't you answer me about that? Uh, I guarantee that's going to be a hard ground. When God calls that Christian, I just get up here and explain yourself. Oh, you were really friend to them? Oh, did I guarantee they'd love your, your companionship right now. I guarantee that God's going to allow that lost man to give you the boot as God gives him the boot. And only after New Jerusalem comes down, new heavens and new earth, then he'll wipe away your tears. Oh, we're, we're, we're at the judgment seat of Christ. Everything's done. You know, I lost. I don't have no crowds. No well, it's all over with. I'm saved. I'm going ahead. Yeah, yeah, you think so. You think so. You know, Paul's the only man in the Bible. I would think that Jesus would be the first only man. And then Paul says, I have not, I forget how he said, I have not shunned to declare the gospel. If Paul is right, he's the only one besides Jesus who will have no blood in given account. That means every man that was handcuffed to Paul got a gospel witness. I wish I was that. And there are going to be times that, you know, I'm a street preacher. Yeah, but you know what? Maybe God wanted you to deal face to face with them instead of preaching. I'll be guilty of that. See, we're not perfect. We have not done all the possibilities to tell them, not, not get them saved. Don't you say you saved them. But we have not done all we could do for them to hear the gospel. Now, I had one man, uh, Darren, I worked with him. I, I, I tried everything I could to witness to that man. I, I still pray for him. I don't know if he's still alive. But, you know, he needed a ride for a while to work. And when he got in the car, I put a tape in a preaching. I give him gospel tracks. And I put Christian music in. You know, I had a Christian hat and all that. I witnessed to him. I tried. And I had one day I was witnessing to him. And I'm saying this because I, I think I'm going to get some kind of credit. Though wrong. I did it wrong. But as I'm sitting there having a beer and shooting pool with him and telling him about Jesus, that guy looked up at me and says, uh, Oh, is this the proper place to speak about Jesus? Well, no, but I'm speaking about Jesus. There were times I went out witnessing door knocking with the church and I had a Marlboro shirt on. That you got free when you bought a carton of cigarettes. I don't do that anymore. And I wouldn't go and harass new Christians. You, know, you, you, you got cigarettes. 
No, they're witnessing. They're not doing a lot better than a lot of Christians are doing. And when you do that, they'll grow. God will lay on their hearts like he did with my... Hey, that's not right. But if they're not witnessing at all, the horror has not even begun. Think about your typical... How many people he has come across and... And he's not perfect. But think about how many people he's tried to tell about Jesus. However he does it. Whether it's simple as not. But he's tried. Okay? I mean, I had a job. My wife and I, we went and got scripture candy. Man, they devoured that. But we buy more. Hey, it's little mints with scripture on it. Okay, that, that counts. That counts. But what do you do with these Christians that don't do nothing at all? Person after person after person after person after person after person after family after friends after co worker after bosses after acquaintances. They're going off into the lake of fire that, that, that burns forever, and that Christian standing there. I'll tell you, there's only one thing that's worse than that. You say, Stiley, there's something worse than that? Yeah, I'll tell you what's worse than that. A man steps up to Jesus Christ in the great white throne judgment. And this is Christian's fault, too. Depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, hold it, Jesus. Yeah, what? I was at that church, I said a prayer. You didn't believe it. Yeah, you said a prayer. Replay that prayer. But you didn't have faith and belief in me. Well, that pastor said that Christian did. The person that met me at the altar said, just say this prayer. Pastor, altar person, whatever you want to step forward, please. You want to explain to yourself? That's the worst thing. When a man goes to hell thinking he was saved. I've dealt with men like that in prison. I had one man I dealt with a couple times. As much as the Lord allowed me. And every single time, my pastor prayed for me. My pastor says a prayer for me. Come on, man. you, you, you got to believe on Jesus. Uh, my pa I'm okay. My pastor's done it for me. That wicked devil. I don't mean the ones going to hell. I mean the pastor. I dealt with another guy and I, and he was homeless. And he said he, he came from a family of stone cutters. And they did monuments of graveyards and, and stone majoring and all that. And I, the guy had a very good testimony of being a stone cutter. And I said, well, what about your soul? I said, let's talk about your soul. Well, I'm okay. Well, how are you okay? Well, the Catholic nuns over there, they feed me. At the homeless center. The Catholic Church had in there. Well, no, no, you gotta have faith. In, no, I'm okay. They, they, they take care of me. The nuns take care of me. That's what's worse. When a man goes off into hell thinking he's saved, woe be to the pastor or Christian that did that mess. Because when somebody like me deals with them, you can't get them unsaved to get them saved. Because they believe they're saved when they're not saved. And I've dealt with men like that. And that breaks my heart. And that pastor and that Christian church, whatever, that angers me. You need to get out there and tell people about Jesus. Well, I'm doing that. And you need to get out there even more and tell them about Jesus. Well, times are coming. Jesus is coming. And you better get on the horse and get riding. Now, the story of Paul Revere is a lie. The British are coming. The British are, That's a lie. But let it be. That Christian got on the horse. That Christian got on the car. That Christian got on his leg. That Christian went out there. Hell is coming. Hell is coming. Hell is coming. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let that be true. 